I have a new voice. Hopefully this one is easier to understand, as today we will review 100 servants at once. Now before you point out that this is a bad joke, allow me to say that the servant featured today, Hassan of the 100 personas, is truly worth 100 servants in terms of power. She is the second of my three god tier 3 star DPS servants, and she has more than earned her place. Hassan of the 100 personas is a deceptively powerful and extremely underrated challenge quest DPS. Props to Honoko Green for understanding just how strong she is. But before we get into her kit, make sure to like, subscribe, and join our discord if you'd like to interact with me or other viewers on the channel. Now, onto her sand skills. Her first skill gives 20% NP gain up and 40% star generation up, and brings her NP gain from below average to above average when active. Just remember that she trades a weak quick card for a great extra, so try to get arts brave chains. You'll also generate some additional stars, but still not many to be honest. Where this skill truly shines is in conjunction with her NP, which we'll get to later. Hassan's second skill is a hell of an overloaded skill, which gets undersold by its RNG factor. It starts out with an evade on a 5 turn cooldown, and this alone makes it above average. But it also has an 80% chance to give you an arts, quick and buster buff, each calculated separately. What this means is that your chance of missing all three is below 1%, and you'll be getting all three buffs more often than not. Amazing skill all around, and coupled with her first skill, even her weak quicks will become average while her arts cards will become very strong. Hassan's third skill is a 4000 heal which also removes her buffs. Quite the double-edged sword, and if not used correctly it will bring more harm than good, but if used properly can synergize greatly with the Black Grail. The good thing about this skill is that it allows for some serious skill expression. Something unfortunately somewhat rare in FGO. One last thing to note about this skill is that in some challenge quests, enemies will apply debuffs that count as buffs. And in those very specific cases, this skill can flip the game on its head and trivialize otherwise hard content. Her only passive is 10% star generation up, nothing too special, really, in practice you'll be getting one or two more stars from your NP or from a brave chain. Hassan of the 100 personas has an amazing noble phantasm. It's upgraded and able to deal decent damage, but its effects are where it truly shines. 50% critical rate down for 3 turns is an absolutely overkill amount that will guarantee that even with crit rate up buffs, the enemies are not allowed to land critical hits for the duration of the debuff, and since the amount is so high at base, you can put this first in NP chains. However, this extremely overloaded Noble Phantasm brings yet another insane effect to the table, in the form of a 3 turn 20% arts resistance down. This somewhat uncommon debuff is the debuff version of arts effectiveness up, in other words, every time you use this NP you get an arts charisma. This not only enhances the damage and refund of subsequent NPs, but especially in the arts teams 100 personas likes to be in. It translates to an increase to the damage and NP gain of the whole party. To top it all off, this NP has a whopping 13 hits, meaning that even with a reduced NP gain stat on her NP, she will still get significant refund, and will easily be able to loop her NP to stack even more debuffs on the enemy, especially with the help of her first two skills. Oh, I love it when a kit has self-synergy like that. For her team comps, consider that you'll probably be bringing her against riders, so avoid most caster supports. Tamamo, however, is quite resilient and also has great synergy with Hassan, so she's still worth bringing. For your third member, there are several viable options, Jan, even in JP, is the best option for AoE invincibility outside of the caster class, while retaining the almighty full arts deck. Shin Shi Huang is a powerful option against enemies with single target NPs, especially alongside Tamamo. Mash brings great amounts of defense up, on top of being a F2P option, and Reigns can deny Tamamo's class disadvantage and still allow her to survive NPs. But you'll have to give your Tamamo a defense up CE. If you're not running Tamamo, BB plus Jan is a perfectly viable option, and a favorite of mine. And obviously, if you're playing JP or watching this video in the distant future, Artoria Caster is an incredibly powerful option and the best support in the game. Now, let's get into Hassan of the 100 Persona's weaknesses, the first of which is her long ass name that makes it annoying to say her name repeatedly. 
Therefore, from now on, I'll be referring to her as HP. Her first actual weakness are her 3 star stats, which lead to her unimpressive damage, especially her face cards won't be doing that much damage while her NP gets out damaged by all NP1 SSR assassins. As well as NP1 Wu Zetian and fellow 3 star Jing Kei, while her health pool can feel underwhelming at times. Her second weakness is the RNG nature of her skill too. Sure, it's a very strong skill, but it's strong despite the RNG, not because of it. While missing the quick and buster buffs is not a huge deal, missing the arts buff will noticeably reduce her damage and NP gain. Her last weakness is that without her skills active, her NP gain and star generation are quite poor, with her quick cards being particularly underwhelming. Fortunately she has a high duration and low cooldowns on said buffs, and if you're running her with Tamamo your uptime will be even higher. Now, the best part of the video, HP's competition. Let's start with HP's more direct competition, Mochizuki Chiyome, and then move on to the others. Mochizuki Chiyome shares lots of things with 100 personas, an arts quick deck, an evade, a spammable single target arts NP with a 3 turn crit chance down, a 3 turn 30% arts up, and strong party utility, as well as low damage. Starting off with their damage, their basic cards are both quite unimpressive and at equal levels HP deals more NP damage at all NP levels. Chiyo Mei, however, received an NP upgrade of her own as this video was being written, which will be arriving to NA by April 2023, with this buff, Chiyo Mei starts out damaging HP at NP3+. For star generation, her San is better, while in terms of NP gain, Chiyome has better basic cards and inferior NP refund, and while her San skills give her better active NP gain when active, Chiyome has a 30% battery to make up for it. What defines these two assassins, however, is the utility they bring to their team, and both of them are packing in this regard. Chiyome's NP, just like HP's, brings a 3 turn critical chance down on overcharge, but has is only 10 to 30%. Still useful, mind you, but it won't be enough to stop all the crits, especially if the enemy uses crit rate up skills. Chiyome's skill 1 NP seal is also a powerful effect on a low cooldown, while her skill seal on NP is a double edged sword, especially because being on her NP you cannot simply not use it. Against enemies who like to use batteries when their bar is almost full, or cast in Vulpius skills before their noble phantasms, this can be very powerful. But it can also kill your own servants by making the enemy use more basic attacks instead of weaker abilities. Skill seals are better used when you have hard defenses activated, as it brings the maximum value then. But with this effect being on her NP rather than a skill it makes it so you'll often just use it whenever. Hassan's utility is useful in all situations, and is consistently strong, so in my opinion she is the better servant in most cases. However, do not sleep on Chiyo Mei, especially after her buff, as a spammable skill seal can be extremely potent if the situation calls for it. The second contestant is Amy Assassin. Everyone knows that this guy's NP gain is terrible, but that is not his only issue. While all the other servants mentioned in this video can use the same team comps as HP, Kiritsugu's lack of hard defense restricts his team building and game plan significantly. He also suffers from the one turn duration of his arts buff, as well as reducing the party's debuff resistance. His NP is quite potent, but not enough to carry the rest of his underwhelming kit, and his damage, while higher during burst turns, suffers from how hard it is for him to NP loop. One last thing to mention is that as his overcharge is the same as Chiyo Mei, I would recommend running the Dove Report command code on both, as it is quite the strong CC and it complements well their overcharge effects. And as for Charlotte Corday, she's like Izo, but with even less damage. She has the ignore invincibility plus ignore defense combo, which is neat, but there's plenty of superior options with these traits, as well as craft essences that provide the same bonuses. Now we have another 3 star servant and a Hassan as well, Serenity. I was originally going to skip her, but as I edited the video she received an impressive buff so I had to mention her. She brings quite a lot of utility, between crit chance down, NP drain, NP seal, and skill seal, as well as a spammable star burst. With her last buff, her damage and NP gain are much closer to those of HP, and her poison stacking is even nastier, becoming quite relevant in certain fights. What her buff didn't fix, however, are her two primary weaknesses. 
longer cooldowns than usual, and a one-hit MP, which severely cripples her ability to NP loop, a huge blow not only to her overall damage but also to her utility. The flaws of skill seal as a debuff and the RNG factor of her NP also add up to make her even less fluid to pilot. And to top it all off, just like Kiritsugu, she has no hard defense, and therefore suffers from the same team building restrictions as him. Next, we have the welfare yogi Shiki. Shiki brings overall similar NP gain and inferior star generation, but significantly higher damage potential. However, Shiki suffers from what I like to call a wrong deck syndrome, not to be confused with a mismatched deck. Uts, Quick, and Buster all have different strengths, weaknesses and playstyles, and most importantly different supports which is very important in FGO's support meta. A servant with wrong deck syndrome tries to play as if they had a different deck type. Not leveraging the advantages of their own decks while getting outperformed by servants whose kits do match their own decks. Cheeky's damage is surely impressive, but it's nowhere near that of quick or buster assassins, especially when accounting for their supports. Yet as a trade-off for her damage, Cheeky brings absolutely zero utility to her team, ultimately getting outperformed by 100 personas. Fortunately for Shiki, the release of Castorial improves her performance significantly, as Castorio enables more aggressive, fast burn arts comps, but as Castorio is not yet out in NA. I can't say if she will be better than HP without proper testing. Moving on to Okada Izo, I love his design, and I can never pick which ascension form to use because they're all so gorgeous. His voice acting is also extremely fun to hear while playing him. However, his kit is just like his life, a total mess, promising at first but ultimately a disappointment, as well as an obvious case of wrong dex syndrome. All he brings is damage, but his damage is not all that impressive, even against humanoids. The dude is literally a worse Shiki, and unlike her he doesn't even have a battery. He generates a decent amount of stars, but his NP gain is quite inferior to HP's, and ultimately his kit is just a stat stick with no stats to back it up even with grails. And if the enemy isn't a humanoid, even 100 personas herself will start out damaging him. And as the icing on the cake, he's limited, so good luck getting him to NP5 to begin with. Next up we have the massage expert himself, Lee Shuin. He has stronger NP gain on his face cards, but in exchange, his one-hit NP won't be giving you much of a refund. His deck, unlike Shiki and Dizo, has two busters, which is much better in the context of his kit. Like those two, however, he tries to make up for his lack of utility with raw damage, the difference here being that his damage is a lot higher than that of the other two. However, the issue with Lee is that once again wrong deck syndrome. If all you need is damage you should go with a quick or buster team, as both Kamu and First Hassan will output much higher numbers in practice. This isn't to say that Li Shu Win is bad or anything, in a vacuum he might even be better than Hassan of the 100 personas. But in conclusion, Hassan as a DPS specializes in bringing utility, and she is the best at her job, while Li Shu Win specializes in bringing only damage, yet there are others who outdo him. You may have thought we were done, but I saved the best for last. Hassan's final competitor is Seto Nai, the only single target arts alter ego. As alter egos have a class advantage against cavalry class enemies, they should obviously be compared to assassins with similar decks. Their active NP gain is quite close in practice despite Setonai having two busters, with Setonai's NP refund being slightly below that of Hassan. But bringing a 30% battery to push her NP gain further. She also generates a good amount of stars through her skill 3. In terms of overall damage, she will more or less break even with HP at NP2 against Riders and at NP1 against Berserkers. While sharing the characteristic of having her damage increase with every consecutive NP. Just like HP and Chiyo Mei, she has a 30% arts up, a 1 turn hard defense, and crit chance down on overcharge, with hers being 20 to 40%. 20% is enough for most enemies, especially if you're running the aforementioned Dove report. Also, her skill 1 can mitigate up to 4500 damage for the team with perfect RNG, though you can count on it preventing at least 3000 in most cases. On the other hand, HP has defensive class advantage, a shorter cooldown on her hard defense, and a self-heal. Meaning that despite her lower health pool her own survivability is a lot better against riders. 
while her sans debuffs and skill 3 make her even better against enemies with buff removal, C Tonai has a very easy time resisting debuffs applied by the enemy. And if the enemy is a dragon, C Tonai brings the immense power of a guaranteed NP drain on her own NP, which is quite easy to spam. Ultimately, C Tonai is better by default against dragons and berserkers, while against non-dragon riders it will depend on the specific enemy, with HP usually being slightly better in those cases. Now that we've discussed practicalities, let's get to technicalities, for her sans skills, 2-1-3 is the obvious order, as skill 2 is her strongest and skill 3 is situational. Maxing skills 1 and 2 is mandatory, while the third one really depends, as against certain enemies you might never even use it while it might be crucial against others. Familiarize yourself with Hassan first, and then decide if and how much you're going to invest in her skill 3. For CEs, it's the Black Grail again. That's obviously the best DPS CE, especially for art servants, but of course there are options. Don't focus on crit damage though, as her face cards deal low damage even with crits. Mark on a smiling face is your best option for NP spamming, to bring more overall utility to the team while still bringing good damage. If you don't have either, the effects you're looking for are NP damage up, arts up, and NP gain up, in this order of importance, as well as a full attack stat spread, which is essential to offset HP's low base attack. And as always, put ideal Holy King in the backline if you have it, as the stat increase will be particularly noticeable with her low HP stat. For command codes, aside from ones that counter your specific enemy, go for NP gain, stars, or survivability, in this order of importance. NP damage up on her single buster card gives you the option to trade refund for damage according on the situation. For grails, to be honest, she doesn't even need them. When I cleared Gugulano with her, she was only at 70 and her skills were at low levels on top of that. She's just that good. But if you do grail her, her damage becomes much more competitive and the extra health is always useful. I personally grailed mine to 80, and I'll grail her to 90 next time there's a challenge quest where I want to use her. Hassan of the 100 Personas is a criminally underrated servant, one that everyone can get yet nobody uses. Perhaps because her kit is not as flashy as some other servants, or because most players think with their crotch and she doesn't conform to their beauty standards. Yet, she remains there, a gem hidden in plain sight, methodically exterminating the strongest enemies one by one, as long as her master knows how to employ her capabilities. Those, I tell you, are the qualities of a truly great assassin. And before ending the video, I'd like to thank all of you for helping me reach 300 subscribers. I'm glad I was able to help so many players, newer and older ones alike, and will keep up the effort to make high quality content for the foreseeable future. And if you liked the video, remember to like, subscribe, and join our Discord server to talk about FGO with fellow players. And tell me your thoughts on 100 personas in the comment section below, if you've been using her for a long time, or if you think I'm the one who's overselling her. And that's all for today, see you in the next video.